Welcome to the Bourbon Van, I'm Phil. I'm Julie, and this is the Bourbon Van's Best Bourbons of 2021. Well, it has been a long time coming as we've spent this past year traveling around and buying bottles, tasting bottles, comparing bottles, putting a list together. And ultimately, when we went to put together our top 10 list, we realized there's a lot of rare stuff on here. There's a lot of bougie stuff, expensive stuff, hard to find stuff. It just wasn't a realistic list. And we thought, let's break this thing down into different categories. So today we're gonna to share some easier to find items along with those rare items, some things you might've overlooked in 2021 or before, because on our list, if we haven't tasted it before 2021, then it can still make this list as long as we tried it this year for the first time. So let's get started right now with our least disappointing bottle. The prettiest bottle on the shelf, <laughs> Old Fitzgerald. This bottle here, we got the opportunity to purchase and we didn't honestly have any high expectations for it or any expectations at all. We thought, how could it possibly be more than a pretty face? <laughs> it's just a bottled and bond, eight year old Heaven Hill product in a beautiful bottle. We weren't expecting much, but we were pleasantly surprised. Absolutely, this is really good whiskey. It's a weeded bourbon from Heaven Hill. We were thinking maybe larceny quality or something like that, but this is a genuinely good bottle and the mouthfeel is actually the best part. It's rich, it's viscous, it's flavorful. For all of our low expectations that this was gonna be just another pretty face, this bottle surprised us and uh, we're starting off with a very optimistic high note here, <laughs> least disappointing bottle of 2021. Well, we started off with one of those bottles that's really, really hard to find. And the next one up is because we're based in Oregon, we're going to give you our best bourbon from Oregon for 2021. And yeah, this is probably gonna be just as hard to find if you live outside of Oregon. I'm really not sure, but it's a bottle that's produced by Hood River Distillers. This is Trails End 10 year aged whiskey. It is sourced most likely from Heaven Hill. In my opinion, this is what Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel was supposed to be. It's aged on Oregon oak. It's beautifully flavorful. This is a bottle that I've reached for more and more as we go into the winter time here. This bottle is absolutely phenomenal, and I realize it's not fully made in Oregon, so it's a little disingenuous to say it's the best of Oregon for 2021, but this bottle is so good, it deserves to be called out, and I don't really know for sure, but I hope that it's something you can find out there because that is a great bottle. I'm absolutely in love with it. So next on the list is the most improved category, and it's one that Phil reaches for a lot. A lot, yeah, this isn't the first bottle of this. Uh, this is Evan Williams 1783. This year it was reformulated. It was an 86 proof bottle, now it's 90 proof. We get this here for $20. It's a great sipper with a ton of flavor. It holds up great in cocktails. It's great in eggnog. It's great in eggnog, yeah. There's, <laughs> there's a lot to like about this bottle. This is the first one on our list that's really readily available. We see this everywhere we go. You may still have some outdated old stock in the old bottle on your local shelf, but when you see this new one, this is a fantastic bottle. Head and shoulders above the last one, so most improved, well done, Heaven Hill. It's a lot of Heaven Hill on the table right now. Nice job, guys. <laughs> well done, Heaven Hill. Uh, well, this is gonna break that streak. We're about to introduce the best new bourbon mm -hmm. for 2021. This one is probably something that we're gonna catch some flack about. Mixed because, reviews out there. Yeah, it's a brand that is a punching bag, but a lot of times when people are punching on it and you ask them if they've had this brand, the answer is no. It's just an easy <laughs> target a lot of the time and it's too bad because this bottle is really, really good and it's everywhere out there. Dickel Bourbon. And uh, this is their first bourbon. Up till now, it's always been Tennessee whiskey. What makes this bourbon? They said it tastes like bourbon. So honestly, it's a little flimsy. However, this eight year aged Dickel product has totally surprised us. We get it for under $30 around here. We've shared this bottle with new bourbon drinkers, experienced bourbon drinkers, novices, extra mediates, you name it. Everybody loves this bottle and I dare you to try it blind. For $30, this is a very, very good bottle. And even if you don't like that Dickel profile, this one's just different enough, you might really like it. We find a lot of orange peel, vanilla, caramel and nice oak on this one. A very, very solid whiskey, very, very solid bourbon. And that's our best new bourbon of 2021. Calling out a West Coast brand with a West Coast kitty. Our most surprising bottle of the year. And you're probably looking at this going, hang on, hang on, hang on. That's not a bourbon. You're right. It is a bow rye. This is a blend of straight whiskeys. There's some bourbon in here. There's some rye in here. This is Redwood Empire's Lost Monarch. And it comes from several different distilleries is our understanding. It's aged from four to 11 years. These whiskeys that are blended together, 
This one here was actually gifted to us by one of our Patreon supporters. I never would have bought this bottle. It's $40 around here. It looks great, but it never really appealed to me because I've had Blue Rise before that I wasn't a fan of. This one here, the flavors are absolutely fantastic. At 90 proof, it's an easy sipper. I reach for this one all the time. It's great after a meal, great for sharing with people, affordable. We saw this for $30 a lot when we traveled around the country earlier this year. So if you haven't had Redwood Empire Lost Monarch yet, it's worth a shot. I hope it shocks you like it shocked us because that is very good whiskey. Next up is the best weeded bourbon category and you probably won't be surprised by this one. FAE-02. Oh boy, is this a good whiskey. Yep. It's just delicious. FAE-01 and 02 could both have been on this list. They're both absolutely delicious. FAE-02 has a little more spice in our opinion, yeah. just a little bit more well-balanced. But everything from this wood finishing series for the last couple years has been great. Maker's Mark, I'm pretty sure that their SE4 PR5 took this category for us last year. So the names aren't really getting any better, but the whiskey continues to improve. So Maker's Mark, keep up the good work with the wood finishing series. We love these. We spent quite a bit of time in Tennessee this year. Mm -hmm. So here are our favorites from the volunteer state. Absolutely. Uh, well, we didn't just want to call out Tennessee whiskey here. We wanted to call out whiskey made in Tennessee. So uh, that's the distinction here. Once again, we're not just strictly going with bourbon, but Julie's favorite bottle actually is bourbon. Yet another bottle that is new to us this year. You've probably had it. I was blown away by Chattanooga 111. Aged only two years at cask strength. This bottle, how can it be so good? It's absolutely delicious. It almost made my bottle of the year. I liked it that much. It's so, so satisfying and it sips so nice and easy. The flavors are fantastic. And yes, this bottle came out in 2019. So we are way behind way on getting behind. to finally taste this thing. But bought this bottle for about $50. That price point for what you get in this bottle is actually stellar. It's a great deal. And we saw it a lot in the Midwest and around the Mississippi River area, all north and south we've still not seen it out west so please chattanooga start distributing out here we're ready we want it this is great whiskey this bottle is going to be gone at some point this winter and we're going to wish we had more and i guess we're just going to have to road trip again out to, to tennessee but that is fantastic whiskey well done thank you what do you have for us i have something wonderful this is probably not going to come as any surprise to you jack daniels koi hill this high proof tennessee whiskey absolutely phenomenal. It's making every best of list. It deserves to. The flavors in here are enormous. And yeah, it's 140 plus proof. It is a beautiful sipper. It is so flavorful. It is so delicious. I can't say enough about this bottle. One little sip and it lingers for an eternity. This bottle, so, so satisfying. I know how hard this one is to find. It's super allocated, impossible to locate out there. If you see it and it's a reasonable price, get your hands on this bottle. This is the second straight year that that limited edition Jack Daniels bottle has been absolutely amazing. I don't know what it is about their barrel proof stuff. It's always, always delicious. Speaking of allocated bottles, next up is our rare and hard to find bottles of 2021. And I know what you're thinking. There's old fits on the table already. There's Jack Daniels <laughs> Coy Hill. What are you guys talking about rare and hard to find? Well, we had to make another category because there's been so many great, rare, hard to find bottles that came out this year by some fantastic distilleries. I don't think either of our bottles are gonna come as any surprise this year. No. So I'm gonna go ahead and go first, if that's all right Perfect. with you. Perfect. This bottle right here, so many people have been looking for it all year. The hype was incredible, and I really doubted that it was gonna be as good as it was, but it has absolutely blown me away. This is Wild Turkey Russell's 13. This Russell's Reserve, the whole line is fantastic. I think this tastes like a blueberry pie with lime zest in it, and it's buttery, and it's extremely fruity and so flavorful. And with that proof point, the mouthfeel, the way it lingers, everything all together contributes to one of the most amazing sips of whiskey I've ever experienced. This whiskey, so, so, so good. And yeah, ultra, absolutely crazy rare. We're so glad that we've got this bottle. We haven't had a ton of it. We revisited a couple of nights ago. Blown away. All in law. I was all in on it. It's so, yeah. so, so good. Russell's 13. I hope you got a bottle of this. It's amazing. So mine will not come as any surprise at all. I've said this before. If this was available at all, it would be my daily drinker. We're lucky enough to purchase it at MSRP here in Oregon. Stag Junior 17. So we got to try three batches of this this year, 15, 16, and 17. The 17 here we believe is the last batch that's going to carry the Junior moniker on it. I don't really know all the ins and outs of that, but what I can tell you is 
batch 17 here, we found that that was much more balanced than the other batches. They're all amazing, but this batch 17 has a nice spice layer, a little more depth of flavor. The other one's very sweet, very delicious. Something about this one really spoke to our palates and that's why batch 17 is on the table right now. It's absolutely delicious. Yeah, and I will say you always hope for just a little bit change when a new one comes out. And when we lined them up, 15, 16, and 17, and tried them, I think it was hands down for us, the winner. Great whiskey. I love it. <laughs> Next up, our most anticipated bottle of 2022. Everything that this distillery has put out has blown us away. This is just one example from Wilderness Trail. Their sweet mash technique, their cask strength product, their rise, the science behind what they're doing, the fact that they're growing like crazy all the time. This year, Wilderness Trail will be putting out an eight year aged bourbon, their oldest aged whiskey yet. We can't wait to try it. Wilderness Trail, they don't sell it here in Oregon, so even if we have to drive all the way to Kentucky, we're gonna get after that whiskey this year. Then we can say hi to Cooper the Cat. Oh, we love Cooper the Cat. <laughs> Now it's time to announce our bottle of the year, and we each have one. May not come as any surprise to you, but they certainly came as a surprise to us this year. Neither one of these, again, came out during 2021. They're just new to us. We just discovered these. And it's a smoke wagon sweep. For my bottle, I picked the Uncut Unfiltered. We have batch number 70. Mm -hmm. I cannot believe how flavorful it is, how delicious. It has unique flavors. Mm. Everything about it appeals to me. I loved it this year. <laughs> and like Julie said, this is batch 70. We've tried four or five different batches. People have sent us tons of samples of things this year. Every single one of the batches that we've tried of that bottle has been amazing. And there are different unique flavors in each one, but the consistencies, dry oak, tons of fruit, just huge flavors. The linger is great. And that oak on the back end is the most unique thing. And that's really why the small batch is on the table too. At 100 proof on this one, the dry oak on the back end is unlike anything else that we've tried. That Smoke Wagon small batch is a bottle that we accidentally bought when we were in Chicago. We thought we were getting another uncut, unfiltered. I wasn't paying attention. Pulled this bottle off the shelf and it has been one of the biggest surprises of the year for us, if not the biggest surprise. If you haven't had the chance to try Smoke Wagon yet, I hope you get one soon because those bottles have blown us away this year. Honestly, we went back and forth on which one of them to pick. That's why they're both on the table. They're that good. It's a little bit crazy that our bourbon of the year is from Nevada, so I'm gonna say that. <laughs> but I am very happy to say one of the most beautiful designs in the game. Completely, yeah. And the juice inside is MGP from Indiana, so we're not overly surprised. We love <laughs> MGP stuff, but if you haven't seen it in your area, you can order it online. So happy to see both of them on the table as our bottles of the year, I guess. So fantastic, well done, Smoke Wagon. You blew us away this year. Well, this is a crazy array of bottles on the table from $20 up to mumble mumble, some large amount. I don't really want to talk about it, but let us know what's on your list. What did we leave off? There are so many great bottles on the shelf behind us and things that we never even got to try this year, but we wanted to mix it up a little bit and give you some categories. So let us know what is the bottle that surprised you the most this year? What's your favorite bottle of the year? Your favorite weeder, your favorite bottle from Oregon, if you have one. Let us know what you think and from wherever we are. To wherever you are. Cheers. Cheers. I can't wait for 2022. Ooh, I got the smoke wagon.